Hello, everyone, and welcome again to the Unfound Podcast channel on YouTube. I am Unfound's host, Ed Densel. Before I get started, if you are not yet a subscriber to this channel, please do so now, if you would. And in addition, what might help you out is if you hit the little bell button so when we upload videos such as this one, you will get an automatic alert that it is available. This will also happen when I do the live shows on Wednesday nights. As the title suggests, this is a map analysis of the disappearance of Rashawn Francis from Scranton, Pennsylvania, or Dixon City, Pennsylvania, on November 6th of 2018. So this is a disappearance that is not yet three years old, and I'm doing this video on July 22nd of 2021. What you are looking at is the direction that Rashawn might have taken that day of November 6th, which was a Tuesday, to get from where he was living, which is down here at the bottom uh, left-hand corner of your screen, and then there's the McDonald's that, that was mentioned in uh, the interview I did with his mother, Denise, where he was last seen, last seen on video. Now, I should make clear, even though I have this Google map set up for walking, uh, a walking direction, you can see that's what the little um, blue dots mean. If I was in car mode, I guess you might call it, I'll go hit the button right here. You will see how it, it, it turns into like a solid blue line. But if you go back to uh, walking, uh, you can see how it changes, uh, how it looks. And you can see the two directions are totally different. But I don't, I don't think anybody knows if he actually got from where he was living down here to up here by walking. That is just a, uh, a theory. He could have um, taken a bus, he could have gotten a ride, Uber, Lyft, taxi, who knows. Uh, but being that the video where he was last seen walking uh, was up here and he was walking, um, I'm just going to go under the supposition that he most probably did walk from where he was living up uh, to near this McDonald's, once again, where that video was taken. You can see by looking at the screen that um, you can take a variety of directions, but the, the, the shortest route is about 7.8 miles from there to up to that McDonald's. If you walked it, two hours and 43 minutes. You should know that usually when I am thinking about these things, that the average human walks about three miles an hour. So if we think about a disappearance, if uh, John Smith was seen at a particular address and people believe he walked away, if he was walking on a regular road or a path uh, free of, uh, of course, trees and he wasn't walking out in the middle of the wilderness, you can probably figure the average person walks uh, three hour, uh, three miles an hour. So you can see this kind of works out that, um, so two hours and 43 minutes would almost be three hours, three miles an hour, nine miles. So we're just short of that. Uh, this, this route right here is 7.8 miles and it would take right now on this day, two hours and 43 minutes uh, to walk it. So that that's about right, three miles an hour the average human walks. Now, the tough part in analyzing this is, for me at least, I'm not inclined to believe that anybody was particularly particularly after Rashawn. I, I know it seems, anyway, that he had problems with Ty. He might have even had problems with other people, but in those talks that he had with his mother, as you heard in the interview, he was very nebulous about who was after him. And, and it kind of, he kind of made it sound like, he made it sound like he had people who had problems with him in the Scranton area 
and people who had problems with him in the New York area, and that's why he didn't want to go back to New York. Uh, it's a little hard to understand. So I'm under the belief that he was uh, delusional or paranoid going through something mentally. I'm also open to the idea that this might have been not true. I'm open to that. I, I'm not, that's all I really want to say at this time, but you will uh, come up with your own beliefs and theories uh, after listening to the episode. So when we get back to this map, how are we supposed to look at it? Are we supposed to look at it, at it from a standpoint of this was a guy who was having delusions, paranoid, thought people were, who were, at, were after him who weren't? Or are we supposed to look at it as a guy who was in his perfect mind and was walking out of his life? It, it's just hard to tell. So in thinking about that, if we want to look at just the terrain and, and the area around where he was last seen... Why would he have been up in this area? And you have to keep in mind, even though this all looks like one uh, city, it's not. This is Scranton. You can see the title right here. And then Dixon City, you can see it right there. So even though these buildings and streets and everything kind of all blend together, these are two different or three even different places. I guess you could say Dixon City is a suburb of Scranton, even though Scranton is not the largest city. Of course, Philadelphia is the largest city in Pennsylvania. Pittsburgh is second. Uh, Scranton is down from that. So let's go up and take a look at this area. And I picked out that McDonald's in Dixon City. And I guess what we might notice is that there are some sort of trees. Yes, it's very industrialized over here, but right here... Um, it looks like we have a little bit of wilderness, and that's about about a mile across right there from this side to that side. Look like looks like there might have even been that might even be a type of mountain or hill there where no houses or buildings, any businesses are. So if he was paranoid, could he have been trying to get away from somebody or somebody he thought was after him, running into the woods? Certainly possible. We also might take a look at the idea that did he go up here because of this Route 6, that he planned to walk along this road and walk out of town. I'm even open to the idea, you know, is it possible being that he was going in a northeast direction? Um, you can see from down here to up here, are we open to the idea that did he have a, a, an idea about walking back to New York? I, I just don't know. Once again, if he was not in his right mind and he wasn't seeing reality as it was, then I guess anything is possible. However, if you take a, a different standpoint that he was maybe walking out of his life, um, didn't want to be married, was worried about his wife coming down to live with him, um, then he could have been walking to his interstate somewhere to get a ride to uh, to start a new life somewhere else. So we just don't know. But this is somewhat of an industrial area, but you can see even off here to the east, it uh, even says your state game lands, the Nature Conservancy's conservancy Dick and Nancy Eels Preserve. I've never heard of that. I'm from Pennsylvania, never heard of that. So there are... A lot of areas, even though he was in a major city in Pennsylvania, that if he was trying to hide from somebody, there were plenty of places to do that. Um, what I don't know is that, is this even close to, to, to the direction that he would have been walking um, if he were going to work? I don't think so. I... I, I um, I find it hard to believe that he would be walking two plus hours to work and then two plus hours home. So I'm, I'm guessing that wherever his work was, was in the actual Scranton area. He might have walked to work, but maybe it was only a half hour or he was taking a bus or something like that. 
Um, it's a little hard for me to believe that he would have been walking to work up, you know, in this area where Dixon City is. Uh, I may be proven to be wrong by that, but that's uh, what my logic tells me. But you can see that in disappearances, where we, when we talk about people who maybe have walked away, David Schrader, Keith Fetter, that we should never uh, take for granted that if, if they're going to walk off, if something happened to them, that they are going to be close to where they disappeared. Of course, we already know that with Tom Brown, of, Tom Brown, of course, depending on what you think happened to him. But here we have a situation where uh, uh, a guy was here. This is where he lived. But then he was last seen way up here. He did not go to work that day. He was known as being a good employee, but that particular day, particular day he didn't go. And so we have to believe that that was on purpose and that he walked or went up that direction for some reason. So I just wanted to uh, show all of this to you, a uh, little bit of analysis, a little bit of the, uh, showing you the map, uh, showing you the terrain, showing you the route. I, I should also say there's no proof uh, that this guy, Ty, I was up in that area. There's no proof that Rashawn was going to meet him. There's no proof that Ty had any idea where Rashawn was that day. No proof on any of that. I'm not saying it's not possible. There's just no proof of that. So this is where Rashawn lived. This is the general area of where he was seen. Um, how that video camera image was found, we don't know. You heard uh, Denise and I talk about that. Are there any other cameras between here that could have captured him? Maybe, but it's probably too late now. So uh, that's all we have to go on at, at this point. But um, you listen to the uh, interview and you decide for yourself. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, please remember to subscribe to this channel. And I will talk to all of you again soon.